Hi, I'm Bob Orr, and this is Washington Unplugged. In a major reversal of defense policy, President Obama today announced he's abandoning Bush administration plans to build a long-range missile defense shield in Poland and the Czech Republic, a policy very unpopular in Russia. Instead, the president now says he wants to deploy a more portable system of land and sea-based interceptors as a defense against short-range missiles from Iran. Here's part of what the president said a short time ago. This new approach will provide capabilities sooner, build on proven systems, and offer greater defenses against the threat of missile attack than the 2007 European Missile Defense Program. This new ballistic missile defense program will best address the threat posed by Iran's ongoing ballistic missile defense program. So that's what the president said this morning, but what's this all about? Well, I'm joined now by CBS News White House correspondent Chip Reed, David Martin, he's our national security correspondent at the Pentagon, and also here at the desk with me, Mackenzie Eglin from the Heritage Foundation. Chip, starting with you, uh, this seems like a seismic shift in policy. What's behind this? Well, the administration says uh, that it is basically a matter of technology, uh, both in Iran and here. They say that, first of all, Iran is moving more quickly on short and medium range missile technology than they are on long range tech technology and also the United States uh, is uh, doing better with its uh, missile defenses on short and medium range. So it makes sense to protect U.S. troops stationed uh, in Europe and in that vicinity uh, and also U.S. allies there quickly rather than to uh, have the long range goal of, uh, tr of trying to protect uh, the U.S. homeland from long range missiles. Now, of course, uh, critics have immediately seized on the idea that what they're doing is basically throwing Poland and the Czech Republic under the bus here. Uh, this system was supposed to be built uh, in uh, the original system in uh, the Czech Republic and Poland, uh, and they're doing it uh, to basically uh, improve relations with Russia. Uh, the White House absolutely denies that. They say the decision had nothing to do with Russia. It was simply a decision uh, that in the short term they could better protect U.S. allies and U.S. troops deployed overseas with this new system. We want to talk about the diplomatic thing in just a minute uh, in a little more detail. But David, first, Chip says this can be quickly deployed. Uh, how quickly, how will it work, and why is this in the Defense Department's opinion better than waiting to build the long-range system? Well, Bob, the, the buried lead here is that there's this new intelligence estimate which says uh, Iran is progressing much more uh, quickly than previously thought on developing its short and medium range missiles. And so where previously uh, the U.S. had thought uh, maybe they would have to contend with a, uh, a launch of four or five Iranian missiles, uh, now they are talking about uh, a capability for Iran to launch hundreds of missiles. And that European defense plan, the one that's been uh, scrapped now, called for putting 10 interceptor missiles into Poland. 10 interceptor missiles against uh, hundreds of uh, Iranian missiles just doesn't cut it. So they had to uh, come up with a new approach here if they were going to take this new intelligence estimate seriously. And fortunately, they've been testing this new missile called the Standard Missile, not a very sexy name, but that's what it's called. And uh, it's uh, uh, had eight successful tests now in which it has managed to uh, intercept an incoming missile. So that's, that's the basic shift that's being made here. And because the standard missile is uh, small enough uh, to be deployed on ships, it can be uh, uh, sent out there in, uh, in very short order. In fact, there are some now already in the uh, eastern Mediterranean. And the standard missile has the advantage of costing about uh, one-tenth of what those large uh, interceptors we were going to put in Poland cost. So now it's, it's uh, uh, financially possible to deploy hundreds of these standard missiles to intercept this anticipated threat of hundreds of Iranian missiles. This more portable system, though, David, would not give us a defense or give Europe a defense against the large intercontinental ballistic missiles, though, right? No, but part of this uh, assessment that uh, uh, took a new look at the Iranian missile capability uh, found that uh, they actually were making uh, less progress than previously thought on developing an intercontinental range uh, missile. So now uh, they, they uh, are looking at uh, another uh, 10 years, another full decade, uh, before they have to worry uh, about at least the notional threat of an Iranian intercontinental ballistic missile. Let's talk about the, dip, uh, the diplomatic fallout of this now. Uh, Mackenzie Eglin from Heritage Foundation is with us. Uh, 
the Czech Republic and Poland really kind of put themselves on the line here. Uh, it looks like the United States has caved to Russia. Is there any reason why it shouldn't be viewed that way? All indicators and reality says that it should. The United States has already entered into negotiations for the follow-on to the START Treaty. We're in those now with Russia through the beginning of December. Also, combined with that, President Obama will chair the UN Security Council committee meeting here in a couple of weeks. Going into that committee meeting, we're not even going to raise Iran and North Korea, and Russia has said we're not even going to press for additional sanctions. So if you look at it a little cynically, but perhaps realistically, we're trading away missile defense in Europe, which was always a tremendous threat to Russia, and, and what it may want to do is expand its power. and getting nothing in return because they're not going to press for sanctions harder ones against Iran. Well, Chip, is there any kind of quid pro quo here? I mean, the question is, what does the United States get back diplomatically for dropping this plan? Well, uh, Robert Gibbs, White House Press Secretary, said categorically, absolutely not. There is no quid pro quo. But at the same time, the White House does allow that this certainly could uh, help improve relations with Russia at a very important time and uh, certainly could help improve relations with Russia vis-a-vis -vis Iran. It would be good, uh, they concede, and heartily uh, concede, that uh, to have Russia working with the United States and trying to keep Iran uh, from mo moving ahead on its uh, nuclear capabilities. Well, it's pretty clear the defense uh, folks are on board because this is what Defense Secretary Gates a short time ago said about the shift in policy and the value of this more nimble missile defense. These capabilities offer a variety of options to detect, track, and shoot down enemy missiles. This allows us to deploy a, a distributed sensor network rather than a single fixed site like the kind slated for the Czech Republic, enabling greater survivability and adaptability. David, I have to ask you, uh, as I understand the plan, and it's still, I guess, kind of unfolding, eventually we could still get some of these large land-based systems. Is that right? Well, we already have these uh, large land-based systems in uh, Alaska and uh, California. Um, but uh, eventually, uh, the, this standard missile we've been talking about, uh, over the years, they're going to keep upgrading it. And eventually, that will have uh, some capability to intercept um, a, uh, an intercontinental ballistic missile, at least in its uh, early stages of flight. The, the idea here on defending against uh, uh, missiles is always to have layers of defense. So if you miss on your first shot, uh, you get another try later in the missile's trajectory. And uh, that uh, part of the theory is, is uh, still working. You want, you want multiple sensors so that you uh, can detect a, a launch in the trajectory of the missile uh, in, in different ways so that if one sensor goes down, you don't suddenly go blind. And you want multiple ways of intercepting that missile so if one of your interceptor fails, you at least get another shot at it. All right, and, and Mackenzie, so what do you think happens from here? I mean, th this is a pretty big shift. Not a lot of people had a heads up. The people in Poland and the Czech Republic only learned about it a few hours ago. What happens now? There is certainly going to be some diplomatic fallout, particularly in our bilateral relations with the Poland and the Czech Republic, not necessarily within NATO per se, but you know, right now we're asking so much of the Poles and the Czechs in Afghanistan. They're both, the, Poland just sent more troops to help with the elections. The Czech Republic is running a PRT and helping advise their Air Corps. You know, we could see some diminished uh, presence in Afghanistan as a result of this, and there's going to be major blowback from Congress. Republicans are lining up today in opposition to this in absence of any intelligence that they've seen to verify this change in strategy. All right, and Chip, just real quickly, anything to the timing? Why, why today? Why all of a sudden? was this laid out this morning? That's a good question. And we did uh, go round and round with Robert Gibbs on that today. And uh, he uh, suggested that there's been plenty of information out there about it. But I tell you, I've had a hard time finding any of it. I think this was a sur surprise to just about anybody uh, outside the Pentagon. And uh, why now and why suddenly thrust it out there without kind of putting it out as a trial balloon or at least announcing that it was something under consideration uh, came to a, a, as a surprise to a lot of people here at the White House. All right. Well, Chip Reed at the White House, thanks very much, David. At the Pentagon, thanks as well. And Mackenzie from the Heritage Foundation, thanks for stopping by. And thanks to you, of course, for watching Washington Unplugged on CBSNews.com. Join us here every weekday at 1230 p.m. I'm Bob Orr. Have a great day.